the hardware. That's to say the knobs and buttons, the chassis design, the keyboard touch, the amplifiers and the speakers. The software, the operating system, the voices, the features and functions. The stage appeal. Would I want to be seen on stage with this keyboard? The magic dust. Couldn't think of a better category name, but can you sense, can I sense the designer's passion coming through this keyboard design? And the summary, do I think it's a fair price? Those are the categories that I'm going to cover today on the Yamaha PSR SX900 that I'm in the shed with today to help you decide um, whether it's the right keyboard for you and indeed whether the price is a fair one. Let's start off with the hardware itself. Now at first glance I thought this is a very small keyboard. Um, it's only 61 notes, and I sh probably shouldn't say only, should I? Because that's what some people want. Um, it doesn't extend much further than its 61 notes. A uh, little bit on the left here where we go into the modulation wheel and we've got the um, pitch bend as well. It's not that deep from front to back, either only 431 millimeters. So overall, it's quite a compact instrument. Um, the chassis itself has this classic Yamaha angular design, which has been around a long time, since the 70s. Uh, it's very Yamaha. The finish on the top is mostly black plastic around the fascia, but around the, the panel and the screen on SX900, we have this brushed metal fascia, which is really, really nice. You don't get it on the SX700, incidentally. Um, but it gives sort of a bit more of a premium feel to it, uh, particularly amongst the buttons with the LED lights on there. The shape of the keyboard itself and the weight of only 11.5 kilograms always means that it's easy to pick up and carry uh, anywhere. You can get a handhold on this and get it under your arm and carry it around without hurting your back too much. <clears throat> now the buttons and knobs are plastic presumably to save weight and cost, but they do not have a cheap feel to them at all. In fact, if anything, the type of plastic they use is nice and tactile and has a slight grip to it, which is quite nice. And they have the LED lights in there, as I mentioned. So it's got a nice futuristic look, particularly amongst the brushed uh, metal fascia as I said. Coming to my biggest personal disappointment to do with the hardware on this keyboard is the fact that it does not have piano style weighted keys. This of course would have added weight and it would have added cost but because of my personal piano playing background, maybe yours as well, I'm a little bit disappointed by the way this feels, but it might be that that's a necessary compromise that's had to, been made, had to be made. I have to give a mention to the speakers and the amplifiers on here, because I have not heard a little keyboard like this one sound as rich and as deep as this one does. Yamaha, you may or may or not know, um, have a very, very rich history in professional high quality audio and hi-fi. That clearly has bled over to keyboards too because in here we have some very very good amplifiers and speakers and I could not believe how rich the sound was. I wish there was a proper way I could demonstrate this over video but when you're sat in front of these you'll be very impressed with the depth of sound that these little speakers, because they must be small to get into a small keyboard, and amplifiers can give you. It's a very big sound. The screen. Before we even powered up this keyboard, uh, you can see the size of the screen is quite large, seven inches. Uh, and when turned on, it really jumps into life and displays everything uh, very colorfully. And it, the font and the illustrations are very easy to understand. Um, but I always have a fear, having had uh, some vehicles and uh, say microwaves and 
uh, alarm clocks and all sorts of stuff with terrible touchscreen controls um, and we're all rather used to using uh, tablets and smartphones that have instant touchscreen controls with no delay I'm always fearful that we will get an inferior uh, touchscreen display on a keyboard like this because we have such low tolerance for them but I'm pleased to report that as you can see the touchscreen response on this keyboard is very very good instant in fact I've had no trouble at all switching between different menus and what have you um, go into the menus which are nicely arranged again everything is clear and simple to understand but importantly it's quick so um, Moving on to the important point about it's not exclusively controlled by the touchscreen. And that is a result of user feedback to Yamaha because when you are playing live, you don't always want to control things on a screen. You want something that's tactile, that you could feel under your finger. And as I mentioned before, uh, the buttons have that. The design of them is slightly uh, um, what's the word there's friction so you you feel like you can really get control of the buttons and you you know you're not going to slide off them as is the case on some keyboards um, so it's not exclusively controlled via the touchscreen there are counterpart buttons around the front panel and along the sides so you can always get control in a live situation so that's a really nice touch from the boys and girls at Yamaha now one little thing that irks me a little bit to when we're on the subject of the software is the playlist function of which we have many videos explaining what it does but in short it's a way of taking your <clears throat> preset settings and putting them in order so if I had a gig on a Saturday night I could put all of my songs I'm going to play in one list and load it up on Saturday night and sequentially work my way through and you can do as many lists as you like um, drawing from the settings on the keyboard but Navigating between them has been a little bit of a bugbear and we've I've noticed that people that own this keyboard they tend to need a bit of support when it comes to getting used to how that works. So the playlist function is a great concept but the user interface is not quite as good as I'd like it to be. However, uh, the good news is Yamaha have been absolute stars when it comes to updating these keyboards used with firmware updates for free. We're up to version 1.5 as it stands today. So I expect something like that um, would be improved upon with a free firmware uh, improvement. Now, the voice selection on here is huge. Uh, 1,337 to be precise. Now to put that in context, Yamaha's flagship Arranger keyboard, the Genos, uh, has 1,652 voices, but is well over double the price. So you've got a mighty selection of voices uh, on here. Um, while the premium ones, the real top, top spec ones are reserved for the uh, Genos, things like the um, uh, Kino strings, which is a highly sampled orchestral sound, and the Revo drums, where they take something like 27 different samples of each piece of the drum kit. That's reserved for the flagship model, but there is a big old selection on SX900, plenty to be keeping me happy for the past 18 months anyway. Now, uh, those voices are used in the makeup of the backing styles as well. So you've got a wide selection to choose from, which means no matter what genre of music you like to play, you're going to find something that sounds authentic um, in the backing. The ability to mix them, uh, tweak them, as you'd expect from a pro-level keyboard um, is all in there. But one of the extra features that I want to give a mention to is called Chord Looper. And it is very, very good for songwriting. Uh, you can see it on here. Now, what this allows you to do is to basically load in a chord sequence that you play and then have it loop around. And you can load in several uh, different uh, chord sequences uh, and you can choose any style for those chords to be looped around in. So for the creative types, if you're doing movie soundtrack or TV soundtrack or songwriting or orchestra writing, <coughs> you're going to find that an extremely useful feature. Uh, it's very, very easy to operate too. And I did a, a quite a long video on this uh, previously, so look out for that one. I think it was here in the shed, but it might have been one of our live stream videos actually. 
uh, check out epianos.co.uk forward slash TV to see all of our videos. Now let's move on to the stage appeal. Uh, now, would I want to take this keyboard on stage if I could choose any keyboard in the world to take on stage? Um, my, me personally, the answer is no, because I have a uh, unhealthy, some say, fixation with the uh, Korg SV2 stage piano, as you may have seen in one of my previous videos. However, I cannot deny that the SX900 does have its own style, and Yamaha are Yamaha, and as I said, this angular futuristic look is their thing. Uh, and it, uh, one thing I like, you've got the famous Yamaha logo on the front there in big letters, SX900 there. So uh, crowd facing, everyone in the crowd can see what you're playing, which is nice. Um, it's probably one of their best looking stage keyboards uh, in total in, in their whole collection. Um, the lights themselves, the panel lights, I have to say look really, really nice in low lighting on stage. And uh, rather pleasingly, when I get friends of mine or family members to um, come into the shed and I say, guess how much this is then, John? Uh, most people overshoot by a considerable amount, which is, uh, which is always nice. And it tells you something, doesn't it, about the design of the keyboard and how it looks to uh, Joe Public. So overall, um, although it's not my first love and what can possibly overcome my first love of SV2 by Korg, I don't know, I'd still give it an eight out of 10 for design because it does have a nice futuristic look to it. So moving on to the category named Magic Dust. I simply couldn't think of a better category title. And what I'm really getting at here is, uh, can I sense where the designer's love and passion was put into this keyboard? Because the thing did not just appear out of nowhere. At some point, somebody had to conceive the design uh, of this keyboard and the software within it and what it does. Somewhere, someone would have got excited about it and put in some of their own passion and love. And I think I can sense it having now had one at home for about 18 months. Um, and it's in the 1980s voices and backing styles because there is a big selection of classic electric piano synths, pads, drums from that era that are exquisitely authentic uh, and clearly made with love. There are backing styles on here for Phil Collins, Cindy Lauper, the B-52s, The Police, Tears for Fears, um, Pet Shop Boys and loads more. And the reason I call it Magic Dust is you cannot fail to smile when you hear the um, Phil Collins in the air tonight drum pattern on here. You press that button that controls the, the drum feel. The doo -doo, doo -doo. That one, um, you cannot help but smile. And uh, if, if you, you can't stop yourself from playing it repeatedly, but you cannot stop your hand from pressing the Phil Collins in the air tonight drum solo button. You cannot do it. Um, and it's that, that's what I mean. It's not just that, it's the Tears for Fears guitar. It's the, um, the, the way the, the Edge U2 guitar sound comes through. Um, the chords, if you play the right chords for the uh, police um, backing as well, it just sounds just like the real thing. I spend so much time playing around with that, not playing the whole song, but just listening to the sounds and thinking, my God, they're, they're just like the real thing. And that's the designer's passion. That's the designer's love. And it comes through on this keyboard and God bless them because they've done a great job with it. And 
I have got a great video actually where I w went specifically into the 80s uh, section on, on the SX700, which is this one's little brother. Uh, so have a look at that too. In summary, uh, is the PSR SX900 keyboard price a fair one? Now, when I consider the quality of the voices and the backing styles that we have, plus the excellent operating system, and then I balance it against the lack of a piano style weighted keyboard, it's clear that this keyboard does lean heavily towards software lovers and keyboardists rather than pure piano players like myself. So as a pianist first and foremost, I don't think I would buy one. However, as a songwriter, I am deeply attracted to the way that this keyboard can inspire creativity within me and makes me want to get on it and write songs and write music with 16 track recorder, with the chord looper, with the massive selection of high quality sounds. It makes me want to keep coming back and get on it and play. So as you could tell, it clearly makes some compromises to keep it within the price bracket that it's in. That has been necessary. But if you can live with those compromises and you're slightly more of a keyboardist than a pianist, then I think this keyboard is pretty fairly priced and you're going to love it. Uh, but if you are a pianist, it, just beware, it might not be quite for you. But if you're like me and you've got a creative songwriting uh, aspect to your playing as well, then I think you're going to like it. I hope that was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments section below. Check out our other videos on SX900 and other keyboards too. There's a whole series of In The Shed videos. Don't forget to have a look at our pre-owned section on our website because we usually have high quality, fully serviced, pre-owned versions of these as well. Uh, but for now, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.